Hello everyone. Hello. It's Ty. I get a lot of questions in the Native Shark Community Discord. First question is, can I learn Japanese with video games? Is it useful? Is it like a good idea? Is it a bad idea? <laughs> and, you know, the first answer I always give is yes, it's, very, it's a very good idea. That's because you get to have a lot of exposure to the language, especially when you live in an area. Like for me, I lived on the East Coast. There, where I lived, there was absolutely no Japanese people I could interact with. So all of my interactions either had to be online or through video games. And because of that, I, you know, also was very nervous to use my Japanese. So obviously I went for video games. And now it worked out all right. So what I decided to do is I did my, my core studies every day. So my core studies consisted of grammar, vocabulary, blah, 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 blah. Uh, no listening, which was something I kind of kick myself now for, but I did my core studies and then I played video games after my core studies. So whatever your normal studies are, if you use a grammar book, if you use some Anki decks or whatever, if you use Native Shark, which <laughs> I think you should, but we'll, we'll skip that for now. Okay, core studies, basically, core studies. If you get your core studies done, maybe you are like me and you did an hour every single day or you do an hour every single day, then you do your hour of course studies, then you hop into some video games. And during those video games, there's plenty of options you can do. It, you can go crazy, right? You can play the video game and look up every word. You're gonna get really tired really quick. <laughs> so it's fun to do and I, re and I don't think it's a bad idea to do it that way, but I think once you start getting tired, you should stop doing it that way for the day. So look up, if even if you just add five words, add 20 words. I wouldn't go over 20. It's pretty mentally taxing to do over 20. Even add one word, two words to your vocabulary decks or whatever, which is either either on Anki or if you did Native Shark Custom Deck. I do Native Shark Custom Deck now because it's quicker and easier for me. But just add your vocabulary. If you can, look up some grammar points or like ask in some communities. The Native Shark community is fantastic for stuff like that. If you have a question on like a grammar point or a sentence, you can come to the community and you can talk, you can ask us about it. But basically, you want to look up those words. Words are easy to understand when you don't know them. So you look up the word and then you hopefully know the sentence from there. So look up the vocab, maybe add it, add it in the original sentence you found it in. It's so helpful because then you have a context that you know it always works for that. So that's what I recommend for that. And then after that, you can be lazy. I like being lazy. So what I would always do is I would do my however much time of studying via video games and adding words to my decks. And then eventually I'd get really tired, like mentally exhausted, <laughs> and I would stop. And then I would enjoy the game. So that's why I think games that you know are the best like games to learn with. There are some exceptions to this, like for example, Final Fantasy usually, at least if you're a beginner, it's not the best. Or like Final Fantasy 14, I can't recommend it uh, for even intermediate. But if you know how to play Final Fantasy 14 and you're like, you know everything perfectly and you don't have any struggles with how to play the game, I don't see a reason to not put it in Japanese, right? You'll still get, ex the language was really old, so you get some weird words in there, but you'll get exposure. And that's why I like playing like Pokemon so much. Like I have like all the Pokemon games. I have all my Pokemon games like on, on the 3DS or the DS. This is a Japanese 3DS, by the way, because it's reason locked. But play your games that you know and love and then just do them in Japanese. And it's really that simple. Like you do them in Japanese, look up words you don't know, give up, stop looking up words when you're tired and just play the game. Because even when you're playing the game, you're getting repetition, you're getting constant re-exposure to words you already know. And words you don't know, you're, you're at least warming your brain, brain up to words you don't know. And then once you finally look them up, like I've had so many instances where like, I like there's the same words that come up in Pokemon battles all the time. So I know I like don't look them up. And then when I finally get the effort to look them up, I'm like, oh my God, it blew my mind, right? So yeah, just like constantly doing something like that is actually really great. And then don't worry about it. Like look up words when you feel like it, don't when you don't. And literally just do that. And as long as you're doing your course studies, you'll be okay. So what do you do if the game is too difficult? Drop it, play a different game, who cares? I did this plenty of times. I have done this many times with 
so many games, honestly. I can't even remember how many games I've done this with. But then I come back like three months later or something. And then it's like, wow, I understand so much more. Or like come back six months later. And I think this is one of the best ways for you to check your progress because it's very obvious because you remember it being so difficult and then you come back and now it's suddenly easy and it's a really satisfying feeling to have. So basically those are the mindsets that I feel like one, as with learning any Japanese at all, don't stress about it. Have fun. It's not going to be fun. It's, you're not going to want to do it if it's stressful, right? So don't do, so don't do things that are stressful. Don't play crazy games if they have crazy language. Um, if you're really like hyper worried about what game might be good and what game might not be good for you, just go on YouTube and like type in the name of the game in Japanese. You can look it up and like find the Wikipedia and switch to Japanese. Look up a let's play of it. See if the beginning language is something you want to tackle or not. Um, and then do it. So I generally recommend games for beginners, especially games that are like a little easier. Uh, like Nintendo games are really good. I have all these Nintendo games. I have like a bunch of DS games. I have a bunch of 3DS games, Wii games, Switch games now too. And all of them are just really good. The good thing about Nintendo is a lot of it is more like a casual laid back experience, which is really good when you're learning. Um, lots of the time I've played like online games in like Apex Legends or something. And it's a lot more difficult because you have a lot more to do uh, in the gameplay. So you can't f stop and focus on the language. But if you're playing Pokemon, if you're playing Harvest Moon, if you're playing something else, I don't know, Kirby even. <laughs> if you're playing Kirby, <laughs> you can pause or you can put the game down and just spend as much time as you feel like doing it, right? Looking it up. And then depending on the game, there's also scripts online that you can check out. And those are pretty helpful. Like Fire Emblem, there's like a PegasusKnight.com or something, .net, Pegasus Knight. And it's just, you can look up the entire story. It has it written all out. So if you're confused and like you want to look up words from there, you just copy and paste them right into a dictionary. So what I use is either gshow.org or uh, hopefully in the future, soon-ish, I'm not sure when, uh, we'll have the Native Shark Dictionary out. And that will be really nice to have. But right now we don't. So I use gshow.org and I've always used gshow.org. It's always been great for me. So I would bring those and then look up whatever word I don't know, copy the sentence into my flashcards. And that's like a super easy way to get stuff. And as far as Hurigana, or should I play in only Kana? Should I play in with Kanji on? What if I don't have Hurigana? And those are pretty common questions too that I get asked a lot. And I think that the more Kanji, the more Kanji that you expose yourself to early, the easier it's gonna be later, right? It's, it's much easier to like, I won't pretend it's not a wall <laughs> to get over, but the earlier you expose yourself to it, the easier it is down the road. Like I promise. <laughs> so I'd say just go for it. If you can get Hurigana, then great. You have Hurigana, the little kana over the kanji. But if you can't, it's not a big deal. I don't think you should just uh, play it in kanji. And what you do, if you, especially if you're not really feeling that, uh, strong or like confident about it your phone is your best friend you go to google and you, you you open the translation app google translate app there's a picture there's a picture mode so what you do is you take a picture of the like of the game itself so like if i'm sitting here with my 3ds i have my 3ds and i take a picture of the japanese on the screen and then i can copy and paste it on my phone into jishu.org or some dictionary and then I can add that to my vocab deck. So that's how I usually look up kanji I don't know. If I can't like type it out or if I don't know another word that I can piece it together with. Yeah, there's a million game recommendations I can give but like the most important thing is play a game you have fun with and play a game you know really well. If, if it's your first Japanese game, like what do you do for your first Japanese game? Play a game you know. You can follow the recommendations of like other people who've made lists and there's so many lists out there, right? Oh, good beginner games in Japanese. And they're helpful. They are. They really are. But there is no game that's better for you than your favorite game. Basically, there might be some exceptions if it's like something Final Fantasy 14, maybe, <laughs> maybe take a step back. But 
Like, if it's Pokemon and you know how to play Pokemon, play Pokemon. Like, the spinoffs are great. If you know a spinoff, like Mystery Dungeon, that has Furigana, and it's really great. A game where you don't have to understand the story to really, like, play it <laughs> is is a fantastic thing. So that's why I like Dolbutsu no Mori, uh, which is Animal Crossing, because you don't really always have to understand what most people are saying. You can still enjoy the game. And then when you do have the effort, you can look up what they're saying. And then Pokemon, who cares what anyone is saying in Pokemon? You can play the game fine. So like when people talk, you can look it up if you have the brain effort to do it, if you have the mental, like, and if you don't, if you're exhausted for the day, then don't. But you still get to read some Japanese while you enjoy it. And then, like, same thing with, like, Bokujo Monogatari, which is Harvest Moon, or Story of Seasons, depending on when the copyright changed or whatever, the companies. That's a great game for learning. And the Switch one recently, uh, Saikai no Mineral Town, came out, and that's, like, a fantastic game to learn with, because, yeah, you're going to have to get some vocabulary, the, like, farming vocabulary, who cares, it's a little bit of effort to look up uh, the first time, but... All of the game, basic, almost all of the game has Furigana, so you'll be able to look it up pretty easily. And then it's like a bunch of everyday kind of conversations. Some Every thing with video games, every character is going to have some sort of like language quirk, but it's such good exposure. So this is what you do is, yeah, when we think about these, well, what do I do about the language quirks, right? What do I do about those? Well, you do your core studies. And this is why I like Native Shark so much is because Native Shark has really really natural language and if it doesn't have natural language it says it shows you it says textbook formal textbook casual right so you know it's like grammatically perfect or whatever and then the non-textbook things are like what people will actually say and if it's something that people won't actually say we'll have like oh this is a scene from an anime this is a scene from a game and then it has the sentence so we always have those contexts especially and i think that's really helpful for learning so do your core studies and then have fun that's really the secret to learning japanese I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I've been doing this for six years, over six years now. I passed N1 uh, at f under four years in, like a week under, two weeks under four years. I've been doing it for a while. I'll tell you the secret to learn Japanese. Do your core studies in a way that you can maintain them and then have fun with the language, right? Think about why do most of us want to learn Japanese? I'll tell you why I wanted to do it is because I wanted to play video games. <laughs> I love Nintendo um, and I wanted to play it in the original language. I also watched a ton of, I watched a ton of anime at the time when I started and I'm like, okay, well, I'm in, I, I love learning languages because I, I, I used to learn Spanish a lot in high school. So I, was, I, I, was, I enjoyed Spanish a good amount. So I wanted a new language to learn because I had graduated high school. I wasn't learning Spanish anymore. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm watching anime all the time. I'm, Nintendo's like one of my favorite companies. Also, like there's samurai and stuff. That's pretty cool. I don't really know. It's kind of cool. Cool. Sure. So let's go for it. And that's what I did is I did my core studies every day. For me, it was an hour every day. But just do it in a way that you can do it consistently. And then just have fun. Have fun. And when you don't have fun, drop it for a bit. And maybe come back later or don't come back and just keep playing other games or read other read books or read manga or watch some anime with subtitles in Japanese or English. It doesn't matter as long as you're doing it. But yeah, enjoy. Enjoy. Secret to learning Japanese. Enjoy. Hopefully that was helpful to everyone. I also talk about this on the Laid Back Japanese podcast. Chie and I, we co-host it and... Yeah, we just talked about learning with video games and stuff. So basically, I just wanted to share my thoughts in a video format as well. But there are different things, and Chie offers her opinion too, which I think is really valuable. So if you want to go check that out, check it out. I'll link it in the description. And if you're new to learning Japanese, there's a link for Native Shark in the description as well. It's got my referral link, so if you sign up with that, you get an extra free week. And then I get a kickback so it helps support the channel. I can make more videos like this. What I want to do is make lots of Japanese learning videos. And if people are also interested, I also want to kind of talk about living in Japan. So obviously, I, I hopefully it's obvious, but I live in Japan. I got these cool sliding doors in the background. I got all my stuff. I got all this stuff I bought from like from Book Off. And it's just like, yeah, I enjoy living here. And I think there's a lot of things on the internet that don't really represent what Japan is. So I'd love to maybe dispel some of those things or clarify. 
because it gets a little crazy sometimes. But yeah, hopefully that was a helpful video. If you have any questions, leave a comment, like, subscribe, I guess, whatever the heck the normal YouTube people say. But yeah, I've been Tai. Mite kurete, arigatou gozaimasu. And I'll see you in the next one. Otsukaru sama desu.